Feel free to dance. Um, I'm Stefan Johnston. Stefan. Stefan. Вы мне есть Стефан, а не Стивен. Он всегда ему не нравится, когда его про Стивен более распространенный, ему не нравится, когда он. So he doesn't respond on Steve. Yeah. So I came to Alta because I wanted to discuss with the, um, this university. About uh, revolutionizing healthcare. In particular, cancer. So I thought what I would do is just give you an overview of some of the things we're doing at my center. And then open it up to discussion about any of these, and then I'll be glad to do this at a uh, chalk talk and informally. Is that okay? Okay. So I'll be quick on this part and then we'll get to the question and Does that sound good? Okay. So the institute that I'm at, the Biodesign Institute, has as a mission these four elements. We want to do interdisciplinary research, make sure it's translational. And importantly, we want something with big impact. And it's use inspired basic research. <coughs> That's Pastorian type of basic research. And we have uh, 11 centers there. With a wide range of, of uh, focus. Uh, Everything from people that are working on uh, uh, things in biophysics to people that like uh, Lee Hartwell, who's a Nobel Prize winner. A Nobel Prize winner. Lee Hartwell. Who is working more on economic uh, concerns of healthcare? To my center, which has no uh, capabilities or specific disciplines at all. Because um, I'm just an inventor. And I train my students and postdocs to be inventors. So we have no specific skill sets. So this is just some facts about the, the institute. Um, but this is what ties a lot of our research together. In the United States, we spend about $2.4 trillion a year. To be 60, $60 trillion rubles. <laughs> Multiply by 30. Yeah. 60 trillion rubles on health care, which accounts for about 20% of our total GDP. So, just out of curiosity, 
Um, what percent of that do you think we spend on drugs? Any guesses? Half. I got 60. I got 50. 80. Sorry, you're wrong. 10%. We spend almost all of that $2 trillion, $2.5 trillion on taking care of sick people. So if we want to do something about health care, we have to do something about this. Taking, waiting till someone gets sick to take care of them. And this situation will only get worse as the population uh, profile changes. And you can see this looking at the population pyramids here, how it's getting higher and higher for older and older. This is the United States, but if you look in Japan, it's already well beyond this now. And this is a particularly important because we spend 25% uh, of, uh, of our total health care costs is from here up. Uh, yeah, of our health care costs. So how do we change this situation? So the, the type of projects that we are thinking about, we call them Apollo, but... But because I'm here, we'll call them Sputnik projects. Sputnik? <laughs> so the the projects are focused on vaccines to prevent illness. Diagnostics, but diagnostics to do very early detection of disease. And therapeutics, um, but targeted therapeutics. I should add, there's another category now, and that's antibiotics, because we're in a crisis from antibiotics. The, in the area of prevention vaccines, our biggest investment has been vaccines for infectious disease. But the project I personally put the most effort into is a vaccine to prevent all types of cancer. As far as I know, we're the only ones working on this. So the idea is, rather than be therapeutic for cancer vaccines or cancer treatment, to be prophylactic, to devise some sort of vaccine that healthy people could get to prevent them from getting cancer. It sounds ambitious, maybe even crazy, but it, I'm pretty sure it can be done. Now, 
The concept is very, very simple. That you take all tumors. And find some aberrant proteins that they're making in each one. And then find the ones that tumors multiply make in, in multiple cases. Then add all of those up to make a composite vaccine. So if you vaccinated with, with this composite vaccine, you would anticipate any tumor that would arise. Is that understandable? Yeah. It's very simple. And we have a, a lot of preclinical data in mouse models to support this concept. In this case, we are uh, adding components of the vaccine, and every time we add a component, it gets better in protection. And there's one important aspect of this vaccine that I wanted to point out that I forgot. A guiding principle for all of the technologies that we're presenting is that they need to be cheap. And the, the logic is particularly clear with, with cancer. 70% of the cancer that occurs in the world occurs in the developing world. So, so if we want to, if we develop a treatment for cancer, I think we're morally obliged. To have a treatment that everybody has access to. Okay. So that's why we're doing a vaccine rather than some sort of much more expensive uh, strategy. So the second area was to comprehensively monitor people's health. So some systems so that we could monitor health all the time. So I invented with my colleagues a, a totally new way to do diagnostics. It's called immunosignature. So it works like this. You take a drop of blood, you put it on a filter paper. You can send it through standard mail. I know in Russia that may not be a problem. Oh, the mail works fast? Maybe it is a problem. But, but it can take a long time. And in Phoenix, 
it uh, it can be 49-50 degrees. But it still works. And then you take that drop of blood and you dilute it 5,000 fold. And then you put it on a chip. And then wash it. And the only thing that will be left on that surface will be antibodies. And the pattern of antibody binding reveals your health status. I'll show you these. These are the chips. And they, they're read by uh, looking at a, uh, a heat map like thing. You did. How many people know what a heat map is? Heat map? Heat map. This, the body heat map. No, the, this type of... So what, how this works is that every one of these things is a person. And every one of these things is one of the peptides on this array. And if it's red, it means there was a lot of antibody binding. And if it's black, then no antibodies were binding. And as I said, it's very, very stable. You can send it through the mail and the signature is basically the same. And I thought even Russian mail. So the, the principle of this is that your B cells in your body are circulating all the time. And as soon as they sense that something's wrong, they start amplifying a specific antibody in response to that. And in fact, a single B cell will amplify its response uh, 10 billion fold in uh, one uh, week. На самом деле, одна единственная B клетка способна продуцировать 10 миллиардов раз. То есть вот ее мощность таким образом огромна. I'll give you an example of how it works. Я хочу привести вам пример и показать, каким образом это работает. That's specific to Phoenix area. Этот пример касается города Феникс, штата Аризона. So we get these things, they're dust storms. And when we get these dust storms, they stir up these spores. And they give, they give people a disease called valley fever. The problem is that people have this disease and symptoms but for many of them uh, the standard diagnostic does not work. And 
So they go for a long time without being diagnosed. So we, we asked whether we could detect with our system these undiagnosed people. So we did what's, uh, if for diagnostics, a classic test. Where we first used some samples to do a training set. And as you can see, these are the patients with valley fever. There's, there's 90 people here. And these are people without valley fever. So based on this comparison, we made a signature. The left part is people with belly fever, and the right part who has it. Yeah, right? I was pointing to that. And actually, I misspoke. This was the test set. So when we took 90 people that were misdiagnosed, we could classify them correctly 100%. But this, this system doesn't just work with infectious disease. In fact, we've used, used it on more than 30 different diseases. And it's important to point out that the same chip is used for all diseases. It can even be, the same chip is used for dogs and mice and people. In this case, it was a training and test set. To classify people that were normal. From women with breast cancer. And these were samples collected from three different sites in the United States. But if we're going to make this system work, so that everybody could be monitoring their health on a regular basis, those chips have to be really cheap. And the people that are the best at making a lot of things cheap are the electronics industry. So we adopted their strategies, their technologies, yeah. to make chips on standard silica wafers. So using the same electronics uh, photolithography 
а используют ту же самую электронную фотолитографию, которая используется в системе Intel. To make, uh, so we make these uh, little chips with all these peptides on it on silicon wafers. This is a blow up of this. Таким образом, мы используем силиконовые чипы, на которых есть пептиды, о которых я говорил. And so it'll look like this when it's done. И выглядит это вот таким вот образом. And there's 24 little pep little arrays on there. И здесь 24 клеточки, 24 квадратика на этом чипе. And each one has 330,000 peptides on it in a half a square centimeter. Каждый из них содержит 330,000 пептидов. And we did this so these slides can be used in standard processing systems. И вот такой чип может использоваться в стандартном процессе диагностики. In fact, if you you can see the array. Если я вдохну на вот эту панель, вы видите, как высвечиваются вот эти квадратики. Just that. So we started a company to to do this. Мы основали компанию для производства подобных чипов. And the goal is to have a company that will allow everybody to monitor their health on a regular basis. Okay, so let's say we have a system where we can detect any disease early. Давайте себе представим, что у нас есть система, которая позволяет выявить заболевание на ранней стадии. What are you going to do about it? Что бы вы сделали? So if we tell you 20 years before you get Alzheimer's, you're going to get Alzheimer's. Вы... 20 лет вам, например, могут сказать, что у вас будет болезнь очки. За 20 лет до того, как у вас развелось такое заболевание, вам могут сказать о том, что у вас будет. There's no drug out there for it. So, so we're in desperate need of new therapeutics, new platforms for developing therapeutics. So, in, in addition, we're, we're having a crisis for developing antibiotics. Кроме того, антибиотики в данный момент переживают кризис. So we decided to try and invent a new system for making therapeutics. Таким образом, мы подошли к необходимости создания новой системы терапии. So we invented this system that we call SynBodies. Мы изобрели систему, которую мы назвали синтетические тела или SynBodies. When when I first named it, I went on the web, and it went to a website with this woman with a whip and not many clothes on. But but we kept the name anyway. So, but what we want is something that could, was very simple and cheap to make, but combine the advantages of small molecules. With the advantages, with the advantages of uh, antibodies, которая бы комбинировала себе преимущества антител, which are very specific but very expensive. Безусловно, что это такая система выявления антител в крови очень специфична, направлена на каждого пациента, но тем она также очень дорогая. So what I invented was this thing for making small molecules out of peptides. Мое изобретение касается выделения молекул в пептидах. So all you have to do is find a 
peptide that binds to this part of your target. to this side, any other point, mm -hmm. and another peptide that binds on another side. And they can have low affinity. Strength. And low specificity. But if you join them together, you get a high affinity, high specificity molecule. So we developed a simple system for making sin bodies to anything we want. We just apply the target to a, a, a slide of random peptides. Pick two or more low affinity peptides that bound to the protein. And then join them together to make the drug. And fortunately, many of these go inside cells. Unlike antibodies. You can not only put proteins on there, but for, but for example, you can put bacteria on there. And if you look, this is a spot right here on that chip. And you can see the bacteria binding. Bacteria what? And you do the same the same thing, you put two peptides together. And you make an antibiotic. Very simple. So this core technology has many different applications. Okay, so what we plan to do is to put all of these platform technologies together. То, что мы планируем сделать, это соединить как бы, вот эти все основные технологии вместе. To link them to create a circle of health. Для того, чтобы создать так называемый круг здоровья. To fundamentally change how we do healthcare. Для того, чтобы фундаментальным образом изменить систему здравоохранения. And this is the acknowledgments. И здесь на этом слайде я выражаю признательность. Нил Вудбери, который является содиректором центра, в котором я работаю. Фил Сафрид был лидером на иммуносигнатуре. И Фил Сафрид, который также разрабатывал иммуносигнат метод иммуносигнатуринга. И эти наши внутренние коллаборации. И кроме того, здесь перечислены сотрудники, внешние сотрудники, которые не работают в нашем центре. Oh, and some people gave us some money. 
Ну и я также благодарен тем людям, которые финансировали этот проект. Спасибо. Good. They're not. It's a good question. They're not. They're not hypothetical. But they are random sequence. Но это произвольная последовательность. Uh, no. Нет, не no. we, we Каждый пептид, расположенный на, этом, на этой панели, мы знаем, какой это But it, well, it's not related to any natural sequence. Но оно не относится, как сказать, не имеет никаких корреляций с естественными естественным последовательностью секвенса. Как вы генерировали эти пептиды? Do you mean I physically? So they're in here they're generated by photolithography. So we здесь они сделаны с помощью фотолитографии. Нет, нет, сэнд, they're peptides itself. They're working together. No, we synthesize them on the surface. Мы их синтезировали на поверхности. Yeah. So we we put one amino acid. So this works like this. Is that, this is the surface. We we have a mask. We shine a light. So this this is a photoresist for those of you. Ah, вот эти вот элементы фоторезистентные. Yeah, and then all, this area activates the amino acid. И вот эта сфера в этой сфере происходит активация аминокислоты. And that's the only area that will have an activated amino acid. И вот это единственная сфера, единственный участок, в котором будет происходить процесс активации. So when you add an amino acid, the next amino acid, it will only add to this site. So you'll get this here. So in the end, though every site will have exactly the same amino acid on each spot, but they'll all be different. Ага. Таким образом, у человека будет как бы, одинаковый почерк или одинаковая подпись иммуносигнатуре. Вообще, сигнатуре... Подпись идет по отношениям. Mm -hmm. Просто это метод синтеза, так сказать, пептидов. Мы просто в разные точки разные пептиды наверное, накладывают, а потом следующие. Ну, то есть, таким образом возникают в разных местах разные пептид, пептидные системы. Ну, это, в смысле, как бы готовится этот чип. То есть они просто наливают одну аминокислоту на определенные дырки, потом другой, в результате в разных местах появляются разные дырки, с разной последовательностью. И для каждого человека это будет абсолютно а Человек тут не влечет. Mm -hmm. да нет. Это, это потом, когда, когда уже реакции, то есть вот эти вот антитела, они реагируют на эти пептиды и прилипают в разных местах. И получается картинка, в зависимости от того, какие у вас есть антитела. Это система. Это система. Yeah. So the so the amino acid the peptides are about twelve amino acids long, but if you use twenty amino acids, that means there are two hundred and forty steps. That we had to do to create this, so 240 times we had to put a mask on there. Intel, the most they do is 18.
So we use, uh, uh, right now we use 18 amino acids. We leave out cysteine and methionine. This is. Did you get that? So, question is what? Uh, so, what is uh, specific about this? Uh, it's the same silica wafer that they use for putting electronics on. We we do the first part that we do is exactly what in. Intel does for its silica wafers that go into electronics. The, they're the same kinds of mass that. So now, uh, do, do this uh, peptide is any kind of cross binding occur? So um, how and does it stick? Sir, how does it stick to, uh, to initial silicon? The first amino acid. So there, it's chemically bonded to the, the first amino acid is chemically bonded. But do you modify the silicon wafer for the bond? Why it's strongly? It's a covalent bond. So it, we're, we've tried to keep things as simple as possible and not invent anything new, just invent new combinations. This chemistry here for the peptide synthesis is, is standard Bach chemistry. It's it's Первая маска, у нее здесь дырки, вот здесь, здесь, здесь. А маска из чего? Как обычный там органический резист. Вот теперь вы наливаете сюда, аминокислота попадет только в эти дырки. Дальше свете, светом светите, а вы активируете только здесь. Потом, значит, это самое, наливаете свежую, и она просто растет там, где вы дырка. А, естественно, эти маски меняются. И поэтому вот вы выращиваете разные пептиды в разных местах. Дырочки просто меняете в разных местах и наливаете, там активируете. So, oh, so basically, how, so how do you test that you actually made what, what you wanted? Ah, that's a good question. So, the standard thing to do is is to make some peptides that correspond to an antibody epitope. And then just put your antibody on and see if it binds. But that's but we wanted much more than that. So now we can actually 
go on to a spot. Go to a spot and do the mass spectrometry on that spot. And identify exactly what the composition of that spot is. That, that was a major accomplishment because no one else in the field had been able to do that. But the composition you know because you know your mass sequence. But you don't know what the chemistry did. So you oh, have okay. to, to know what you made, you have to look at, at the atomic composition of the thing you made. Но не случайно, если не случайно, случайный набор разных пептидов. Больше ничего не надо. В этом как бы есть элементы универсальности. Ну, у каждой болезни есть свой рисунок. Поэтому здесь должно быть как можно больше. Потому что антител привязывается к этим пунктам. Сколько заболеваний уже протестировали, установили конкретную для них картинку? So we've tested about 35 different uh, human diseases. And, and each one had its own signal. Accuracy. Accuracy. It varies from things that, like valley fever, which are 100%. To uh, maybe 80% in pancreatic cancer. Late stage pancreatic cancer. Поэтому я как бы продолжу вот этот вопрос, у нас это называется специальность. Мы какой-то был результат. У всех например, я не знаю, связано это с вашими исследованиями или нет, когда Анжелина Жюли удалила свою грудь, uh -huh. значит, она удаляла не на основе ваших вот этих методов достаточной диагностики, потому что это очень дискуссионно. Therapy. She didn't use your method when she has done mastectomy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, I guess there were a couple questions there. First, first the um, the data I showed you was not off prospective clinical trials. Данные, которые я вам показал, это не были перспективными клиническими данными. It was off of historical samples. Это были как бы данные um, архивных образцов, клинических архивных образцов. Be because the antibodies are so stable, we can use samples that are as much as 20 years old. Uh, поскольку антитела очень стабильные вот на этих uh, фильтровых 
мы можем использовать образцы даже 20-летней давности. And given the history of biomarkers, you should be very skeptical of anybody who says 100% accuracy. But this system has some very unique uh, aspects to it. Однако эта система имеет очень уникальную специфику. It, each array is essentially making 330,000 measurements on that sample. <coughs> На каждом образце задействовано 330 тысяч различных пептидов. Which is fundamentally different than making a single measurement on a single biomarker. Что, конечно, коренным образом отличается, когда вы делаете одно одно измерение с помощью одного биомаркера. So uh, the other question was uh, about Angelina Jolie, and I have to admit I did not know who she was until somebody asked. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I asked well in front of my kids and totally embarrassed them. So I did look into the situation or the reports. Uh, the, I mean, the, the decision she made, of course, was personal. But given the genotype that she had, it's rational. But I would hope that if there was a system like this that could be could work for early detection. There wouldn't have to be such sort of barbaric solutions to that problem. Okay, B cells are key to this process. And it's, it is about B cells. Right? Yes, yeah, so yeah. basically it's an educational question. What does this B cell mean? Okay, so let's take cancer for instance. It's very clear. Both in human and mouse studies. That at the earliest stages of a tumor, it, it's being surrounded by B cells, T cells, macrophages, and T regulatory cells. So all those cells are reacting to the tumor at the earliest stages. Probably in most cases, these guys win. And you don't get a tumor. As, as Ann Barker said, people are cancering 
all the time. No, they don't. Most of them are in, are in, in an organ. There are, so this is, this is the pancreas, let's say. So these B cells are, are reacting to the tumor and, and giving off antibodies. But these T regulatory cells, if they suppress these T cells and B cells enough, the tumor will grow. So the response is there, it's measurable. Таким образом, ответ, иммунный ответ организма может быть измерен. But it's not effective because of this downregulation. Однако он неэффективен из-за вот этой низкой регуляции. Вот, не подавляется. То есть его можно увидеть, но он пода подавляется, так сказать, вот этими регуляторными клетками. Поэтому как они достаточно генерируются, то есть когда рак есть, можно увидеть подписи. Let, let me show you an example that, that's really remarkable that totally took us by surprise. These are the normal people. These are the women with breast cancer. Notice the normal people have more reaction than the women with breast cancer. We see this again in all the chronic diseases we've looked at. Most of the signature is the loss of reactivity. This is especially true in early cancer. It's mostly a down signature. Could you comment on this? How do you visualize? Oh, 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 how do we visualize? So, okay, it's it's just like an ELISA. So, if these are the peptides on the spot and an antibody binds, we detect it by coming back with a, another monoclonal antibody, again, an anti human. Antibody that has a fluorescent probe on here. And then we detect it with a laser. So it's it's just the same as done at, in microarrays or any other type. You're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe.
maybe, but uh, we don't. We don't want to incorporate the noise of, of reusing something. Не, не под, не поднят шум. Я имею в виду просто, когда будешь стирать, вот там чего-то чего испортишь, и в результате будет ошибка. Ну, то есть, да, вот они везде пометки. Вот это не You know, what kind of statistics in Arizona? Okay, Arizona is peculiar, is unusual in two ways. Arizona, One, it's a retirement state. So we have a much higher rate of uh, older people. And second, it, uh, it, the sun is very intense. <laughs> so we have a higher incidence of melanomas. Other than that, I, I don't know anything peculiar. Да найдем, по если интересно, мы найдем просто это не наш специальность. No, the, I can't comment on it. I, I do know this, thing. there's nothing unusual about Arizona. There are, there are some things that are different about cancer in the U.S. versus cancer in other countries. So, for example, Uh, would you comment on the balance uh, of uh, cancer cases kind of, of the United States of America compared to the uh, cancer cases situation in Russia? Did you compare? Yeah, uh, I had a slide on the statistics no, of that. Yeah, slide that is the statistic. So, it's, in the United States, cancer is the tied with heart disease as the leading cause of death. I don't know if I didn't have that statistic here. But in, in uh, Russia, heart disease is, uh, far exceeds cancer as a cause of death. But it's still a second leading cause. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But probably not. The reason why the reason why is is that once the um, the immune system has seen the tumor antigens, it takes over the immune system. Dominates, takes over, uh, controls. It only really works if you vaccinate it ahead of time. 
And then, so the, the immune system is pre-existing before this presents the antigen. The, the same is true for infectious disease. You, you can't take your vaccine after you get infected. How easy you are you developing uh, promoted? Uh, what difficulties do you have? Uh, do you face? And uh, the second question: uh, Do uh, have you tested uh, your developings on yourself? Do you see a future? Два вопроса. Насколько есть трудности ваши исследования, в чем они состоят, и испытывали ли вы этот метод на себе? It was a very interesting question. Это очень интересный вопрос. So, and they were in English. И он был задан. I forget. Okay. Я забыл. So, uh, about difficulties. Что касается трудностей. Any time you try to do something that um, is quite uh, revolutionary. Uh, most uh, most people in the scientific community will oppose it. And the hardest thing for I found for being an inventor is to become resistant to all the negative uh, stuff that you will get. You need to become a so on this prophylactic vaccine, we have fought that for nine years. And most of the cancer community has opposed it or tried not to get it funded. So we're going to get around that opposition by doing the vaccine in dogs first. In the immunosignaturing area, we also received a lot of opposition because People don't want to believe it could be that simple. Imagine that you're you're a you're a scientist. You spent hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of dollars on mass spec. And someone comes along and says, you just take a drop of blood and it's a lot simpler. So as to trying it on myself, so occasionally, uh, I invented the gene gun. I don't know if you've heard about this. It's a you know, it, it's a gun that shoots little bullets with DNA on it. So everybody said, does it hurt? So I shot myself. And it didn't hurt. But I still have the bullets in my skin. <laughs> They're gold. Uh, this piece is worth a lot more than it used to be. No, it's okay. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but the immunosignaturing 
uh, most people in my center mm -hmm. monitor their health with this. No. And if if the vaccine works in dogs, I would have no hesitation to try myself first. And I, I will, from my experience with veterinarians, if it works in dogs, the vets will give it to themselves. Если это сработает на собаках, то ветеринары согласятся испытать это также и на себе. 